Hello everyone, my name is Luca. I'm a PhD candidate at Eindhoven University of Technology and today I'm going to be presenting about the microstructural features of Thickwall 316L produced by YR Aditi Manufacturing. First of all, just a reminder of what Aditi Manufacturing is. It, it is, according to standards, a general term of the process of joining materials to make objects based on a, on a 3D model by adding material usually layer upon layer. And this is a general description because it refers to every material, technology, and scale. But in this work, we're interested in metal additive manufacturing for large components. One good candidate for manufacturing large components is wire additive manufacturing. As in the name, it uses wire as a feedstock material and electric arc to melt these, uh, this wire and deposit the material. It can be further categorized based on the underlying process, which are based on the traditional welding techniques, for example, gas metal arc welding, as shown in the image, gas tungsten arc welding, and plasma arc welding. And these techniques are good for, for uh, are, are suitable for manufacturing large components because they have inherent high deposition rates and consequently high building rates as well. And because we're using these methods in an additive manner, we still have the design freedom to make near net shape complex, uh, complex parts. But we also have the possibility of tailoring the local microstructure and mechanical properties to make, uh, to manufacture parts for a particular, particular application. A few notable WAM examples has been, that have been manufactured are the WAM Peller, manufactured by Romlab, the MX3D Bridge, manufactured by MX3D, and the Crane Hook, manufactured by Hausman. These three examples show the versatility and of, of manufacturing very large parts for very different applications. And also it shows the versatility in terms of the different materials that can be processed. But because, but because in one we're repeatedly heating and reheating material, this can have an effect on the metallurgy of the part. Usually for one, we do, because of the subsequent heating, we tend to have very heterogeneous microstructures. For example, we have very coarse and very oriented structures, we, which translates into anisotropic mechanical properties, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but in order to be able to exploit the versatility of one and the ability of tailoring microstructure, we really need to understand the relationship between the two. And therefore, the aim of this project is to provide an understanding of the microstructural characteristics of a 1316L thick part. And we provide this understanding by, provide, by, by in terms of microstructural characterization using different microscopy techniques. So in order to perform the study, we manufactured a sample, a block sample, which is shown, stainless steel one, uh, as, shown in the, as, as shown in the image. We have the, the sample, uh, this block is 140 millimeters long, around 40 millimeters wide and 30 millimeters high. Uh, a summary of the processing conditions show on the left, but, and, and then we use the bidirectional scanning strategy to manufacture this part, which means that each layer is, has the same deposition direction, which is parallel to Y but within the same layer has the same deposition direction but if you go to the to a, uh, to, to a layer above then you have opposite deposition direction so if we if we cut the sample in half and analyze the microstructure we can see that we the first thing that we can see is that we have the part is mostly bulk we have two uh, round shaped defects we can be for example, some inclusions or some gas porosity that was entrapped during the manufacturing. But overall, the part is bulk as expected for a wire-based process. We also see that we have a very coarse structure with dominated by elongated grains. And, but we also see that we have, like, we have a gradient in the structure. If we go towards the bottom, we see that we have a more refined grain structure. But from the second layer on, we see that we have a coarser structure. And this can actually be explained based on the fact that the, we didn't preheat the base plate initially. So the, the cooling rate for the first layer was very, very fast. But from the second layer on, it's like we're depositing the material on a, on, on a preheated sample. So then therefore the cooling rate is lower and then it could, be, could translate into a coarser structure. 
But we can also identify here that, that we have the, the, the beat stacking. In this case, it's always from left to right for every case based on the shapes that we see here. And then the layer stacking is also vertical. So from bottom up. Another thing that we can identify here based on the analyzing the grain shape is that we have elongated grains and, and these elongated grains that are a result of basically two solidification mechanisms. One, which is epitaxial growth, which means that one grain, a pre-existing grain, can continue growing instead of nucleating a new one. And how much this grain is going to grow depends on how well aligned it is with the temperature gradient. And this is actually known as competitive growth. And, and, and the combination of these two, uh, the, these two mechanisms form the entire microstructure of the part. But if we, anal if we analyze this image, we can see that we have a very oriented structure. So in order to be able to study these, this, orient this grain growth orientation, we can actually post-process this image. By post-processing this image, we can show, uh, uh, and having the, to, to get the, the grain growth direction, uh, this is what is shown by the colors here. So basic, the, and these colors represent the angles in, in, in degrees. And then we see that closer to the edges, we have these grains uh, directed towards the, the edges of the part. But in the bulk of the part, we see some periodic repeating regions, some with grains that are well aligned with the building direction and some regions that are not. But then the question is, why do we have this behavior? like these characteristics and in order to study this we can actually take a closer look uh, in, in, a, in a magnified micrograph and by analyzing this magnified micrograph we can identify these repeating structures which are known as fusion zones and these fusion zones are nothing more than partial weld beads after the neighboring weld beads were deposited and we see based on the on this post-process micrograph is that the, the grain the, the grain growth direction tends to be perpendicular to the fusion interface and that is expected because that's the direction of maximum thermal gradient but what's more interesting is that we see that there are some regions that we have very that, that these grains are very aligned with the building direction and then the question is why and uh, and one reason for that is because we have these, because of the penetration profile that basically it's straight, you have a basically a positive or, or neutral curvature of this penetration profile, which actually promotes uh, competitive growth, basically the unhindered growth of the grain. Whereas when you have a negative curvature, these competitive growth, then the, the grain growth tends to be annihilated. And exactly the region where you have this promotion of the of the fusion the fusion uh, of the of the grain growth is exactly on the overlapping regions, and this is a result of the fusion zone shape and also on the type of stacking that we used for the uh, uh, the, the bead stacking that we use uh, like like horizontal stacking and vertical stacking of the, the, the horizontal stacking of the beads and the vertical stacking of the of the layers therefore there is a significant uh, influence of the of of the the position strategy on the overall part but the next question that we should ask is do do we also see the same trend in terms of texture so we perform, so we perform some electron backscatter diffraction analysis to to study the, the the microtexture of the part and by doing this we identify that we have a dominant 100 direction in these overlapping regions and similar to what we saw before we still have this periodic repeat, repeating in both overlapping regions which means that we have uh, that these regions actually promote epitaxial growth uh, and and mm, consequently, they would affect the mechanical properties depending on how you load the, the, this component. So, and the, the reason why we have this 100, this strong, dominant 100 texture is because actually 100 is the easy grow direction for cubic uh, materials and specifically uh, uh, austenite, which is a face center cubic material, crystal. This is also, uh, this is also the case. 
Additionally, because we have because in the overlapping region we have very large grains, uh, this actually dominates the overall texture of the part. And this is what you see in the pole figures underneath that you see that the one because we have these very large grains in this particular region that these skew the, the overall texture of the part and dominates. The next question that we can ask is does it also varies do, do we also see the rotation of the texture as we go towards the edges of the part? So in order to study this, we did uh, we performed several EBSD scans from the bulk all the way to the edge, and indeed we see the the periodic repeatability of this region of these overlapping regions with the strong 100 direction. But as we went towards the edge, we saw the rotation of this 100 towards the edges of the part. So we do have spatially varying. Uh, grain growth direction, grain size, and spatially varying texture, which would uh, explain, uh, which could result in an isotropic mechanical properties. But we also see that these, uh, we also saw before that the, the grain growth direction is dependent on the fusion zone shape. So we want to study the fusion zone shape and, and see, do we have variations in the fusion zone shape across the entire part? So to do this, we actually developed a method in which I'm not going to be explaining in this presentation, but it consists of basically tracing these fusion zones in a, micro, in a micrograph and then aligning these using an, an alignment method. And then you can calculate a mean fusion zone shape, or you can also calculate a periodic fusion zone shape, and then you can map information inside these, uh, in this case, like average green growth direction. And you can use these to actually perform spatial variation studies, or, for example, if you want to, to use these as an input for numerical simulations. So here we're just going to present in, in one case, for example, if you want to compare the spatial variations of the, of the, of the mean shape in, in terms of area and rotation with all the experimental fusion zones. And then we directly we can identify if we compare in terms of area and rotation, we can identify that the, the outermost fusion zones, they're different than from the mean one. And we see that they are rotated and actually the area, they have smaller area. And actually these differences are a result of the, of the uneven layer height during the manufacturing because of the contraction of the material. So that means that towards the, 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 the edges of, the, of, of each layer are actually lower than the rest of the, 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 rest of the material, which results that the, the distance between the welding torch and the, um, uh, and the base material is higher, which increases, which results in an increased wire length, meaning that the, you have a higher wire resistance resulting in uh, lower current, therefore less material being deposited. And that's why you see lower area and also rotated fusion zone shapes. And these results, in, uh, these rotated fusion zone shapes also explain why you have the rotated grain towards the edges. But okay, now we talk about all the, like the more macros, macro information. What about the solidification structure? Because we know that based on the composition that this material should solidify primarily as ferrite. Uh, you have, sorry, it has primary ferrite solidification, but, uh, but we have an austenitic structure. So we know from, based on, on welding theory that because of the, the, the fast cooling that we are gonna have an austenite matrix and dendritic ferritic structure. So, we took several several uh, higher magnification uh, micrographs, and indeed we identified that we do have these these austenite matrix with dendritic ferrite, and then we see that we have different morphologies across the part, and in, mostly in the bulk we have vermicular and leffy, but towards the, like across the fusion like close to the fusion uh, boundary we have other unstable morphologies like uh, columnar and co and globular for example. So we, we know that we have these different morphologies, but what about the, the ferrite content? We, we, because we have these different morphologies, we know that we're gonna have locally that the, the ferrite content is gonna vary, but what, about, but what we see is that globally, this, this, uh, there's no significant variations in the ferrite fraction. 
But then the next question is, do we have any any other phases besides austenite and ferrite? So we took uh, so we took higher magnification mic uh, micrographs and we identified these black dots, which initially we suspected to be oxiding micron oxide inclusions, and indeed by performing energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, we identified that these are actually oxide inclusions uh, like manganese and silicon rich oxide inclusions due to oxygen pickup during the, the manufacturing process. Therefore, to conclude, we, we identify that we have for this particular processing conditions, we have highly oriented and textured structures with bands of large grains in the overlapping region of an adjacent fusion zones with a dominant 1O texture which means that there is a significant influence of the deposition strategy and processing conditions, which also um, gives the opportunity of tailoring, the, the, uh, tailoring this microstructure by, by changing these deposition the strategies. We all have a microstructure consisting of austenite, ferrite, and microsize oxizing, so oxide inclusions, and we also see significant spatial variations in terms of the microstructural features. And with this, I would like to end my presentation and thank you for your attention.